When I was 13, I died. For two minutes and 11 seconds, my heartbeat stopped. My pulse was gone and I was dead. One second, I was racing my bike along the sidewalk and made a turn to the left to cut across the road. The next, I stared up at a blank ceiling, wrapped in bandages and wires and tubes, while some machine beeped next to me in a steady rhythm. I had no recollection of what happened in between. It didn't take long for this little gap in my memories to be filled. My father still can't stop telling the story any chance he gets. He tells her during dinner, during car trips, during TV commercial breaks. He tells it of friends and colleagues and strangers at the bus stop. Remember that time you got hit by that? We were in a panic when we got the call. They said your heart stopped. You were dead. No. Two minutes. Yes, that's his way of coping with a traumatic experience. Two minutes and eleven seconds. Two minutes and eleven seconds. Two minutes and eleven seconds. It didn't take long for that number to start haunting. Soon, it came for me every night. The dream started a few months after the accident. My body was already on its way to complete recovery. I had left the hospital bed behind and returned home. My left leg was still trapped in a cast, and the scars on my left torso would never fade, but that was it. It was around this time I found myself waking up at night more and more often, sweating and shivering, the pain enveloping in my chest. Soon I grew able to remember the nightmares that preceded these episodes. Or rather, the one single nightmare. It was the same exact dream every night and still is to this day. The same visions, the same sounds, and it always lasts the exact same time. Two minutes and eleven seconds. I know because as it became a regular occurrence, I started counting along. One second, two seconds, three seconds. The rough asphalt off the road takes in half of my view. My body lies in an awkward angle on the gray, coarse material. Glittering fragments of glass and small smears of red fluid are splattered around me. Four seconds, five seconds, six seconds. People stand around me, some shuffle for a better view, others just frozen in place, their eyes wide open, their trembling hands squeezed against their lips. The blue light flashes somewhere behind me, its presence vaguely visible against the bright sunlight. 10 seconds, 14 seconds, 15 seconds. A deep pain ripples through me, cold and heavy as if every bit of warmth slowly bleeds from my body. It radiates from my torso up into my neck, and my head, and my limbs. I want to scream, but my lips refuse to move. They're slightly open. My tongue hangs out on the side. A thick fluid slowly drifts from it onto the ground. I want to move, but my muscles don't respond. I expect the scent of oil and blood to spread into my nose. I smell nothing. I smell nothing because no air enters my nostrils. No air enters my nostrils because I have stopped breathing. 29, 30. Growling engines, distant sirens, voices, contorted fragments of noise that make less and less sense. Hands touch me, squeeze against my neck and wrist. I can barely make out the sensation, but it is there. Careful at first, and more and more frantic. Shouts grow louder, more hands, more touches. Shadows fall over me as people draw closer. 55, 56, 
57. Someone stabilizes my neck. Someone grabs hold of my arm. Someone slightly lifts my leg. Someone carefully squeezes against my shoulder. With a gentle, fluid motion, I am slowly flipped onto my back. The sun sends out its blinding rays, fabric tears as the shirt is removed from my torso. 125, 126, 127. Man kneels over me, his bright orange vest stained in blood. He positions his hands against my chest and presses down. My body twitches under the impact like a giant rag doll. Another pump, another, then a short pause, then it starts again. Pump, 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 pause. Pump, 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 pause. One fifty-nine, two minutes, two one. Pump, pump, pause. Pump, 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 pause. It's hard to keep track of the time. The palm hits my chest with a steady rhythm, but that rhythm doesn't fully match the seconds ticking by. I feel like I am burning, like there is fire licking over my inside, like thousands of insects burrowing into my skin and start tearing out my flesh. Two six two seven two eight. Pump, 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 pause. I stare up at the blue sky, I concentrate on the faint white cloud formation drifting past. Try to focus its contours and shades. Anything to keep my mind away from the next second. Anything to divert my attention from the moment where the pain reaches its peak. Two, nine. One of my ribs break under the pressure. I want to scream. I need to scream. But my body is dead. My lungs are empty. Those hands keep grinding and pumping unrelenting. Driving the broken piece of bone deeper and deeper. Two, ten. Something jolts in my chest. A first flutter of my heart muscle. Dots of light dance in front of my pupils. The sunlight disintegrates the remnants of the clouds overhead. Shouting voices twist and roaring, spinning. Two, eleven. And I wake back in my bed. The pain is still there, throbbing and pumping, as if those hands are still hammering down on me. For the first few moments, it feels as if my heart might go out again. Cold sweat coats my skin, my muscles tremble, then the sensation fades. Every night, two minutes and eleven seconds. I've talked to doctors about the reoccurring pain, had a few hospital checkups. There's nothing physically wrong with me, nothing they can find, at least. I haven't told anyone about the dream, though. This is the first time I put the experience to words. Even telling strangers on the internet feels shameful and embarrassing. It's one thing to show off the parts on my back where my skin is still twisted and contorted. Like some viking showing off his old battle scars. It's another thing entirely to talk about waking up at night crying and sobbing. It's another thing to admit to secretly covering my mattress with newspaper sheets in case I lose control of my bladder again. But I have to talk about it. Something changed. It happened a few days ago. One second. Two seconds. Three seconds. A woman. A bit older. Maybe in her sixties. Thin and tall. Dressed in painfully bright mismatching colors. Sporting outdated flower patterns. Walked along the sidewalk. She was slightly hunched over, carrying two black plastic bags in her hands. She was just another passerby. She was just some random old lady. She was not supposed to be there. Four, five. I've lived the dream thousands of times. Every little moment has always been the same. 
Every detail is burned into my mind, unchanging, unwavering, always the same. This woman was not supposed to be there. She had never been there before. Eleven, twelve. She stopped and looked over. Fourteen, fourteen, fifteen. Stood there, staring. Then began to walk slowly towards the scene of the accident. Her bag swung back and forth in her hand. Some blackish fluid dripped from one of them at each step. Fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven. She stopped at the outer edge of the crowd, half hidden between a wall of people. The first responders, as always, grabbed me and gently flipped me onto my back. I couldn't see her anymore from this new position. The dream continued as it always had. Their hands squeezed down on my chest. The cloud drifted across the sky. My rib broke and my heart flooded in life, and I woke up. Everything just as always, except for that woman. She shouldn't have been there. The next night, she was back. At this time, she stood in the center of the crowd from the very start. I could see how garish she looked. Her makeup had been painted thick over her aging face. White glittering powder covered her. Her lips were smeared with gleaming red lipstick to the point they looked like wax replicas. Her eyes were encircled with dark, violent rings of shade. The face beneath this grotesque mask of makeup was inhumanly still. No twitch of a muscle, no flare of a nostril. She didn't even seem to blink. She just stood there, staring down at me. Her pupils never shifted away. When I slipped onto my back, she drifted closer, cowering in the corner of my vision. Seconds ticked down. Pain grew worse. The palms at my chest pump, 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 pause. Her body tensed in rhythm to the resuscitation. Her thin bony fingers tightened to shaking fists, and opened up again. Um, um, um. Pause to nine, to ten, to eleven. When I woke up, I half expected to see her still standing there, somewhere in the darkness of my room. Of course, she was gone along with the rest of the dream. I was alone. My pain, my tears, and my shame. She'd return the night after. So this time she stood even closer, as close as she was able to get. Other members of the crowd slightly leaned away from her as if she emitted a disgusting smell. She didn't react. She didn't seem to register anything besides me. As if all these other people weren't even there in the first place. Fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven. The woman tried to step closer. The moment I was turned on my back, one of the first responders stepped in her path and pushed her back. Pump, 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 pause. One thirty-three, one thirty-four, one thirty-five. The pain welled up, and grew deeper, and the woman was still there. Her lengthy body twisting to the left and to the right, her fingers twitching in rhythm to those palms squeezing down. Pump, pump, pump. One, pause. One fifty. One fifty one. The moment of the worst pain was quickly approaching. She tried to push closer once more and was repelled the second time. Two four. Two six. Two seven. My eyes drifted to the cloud above. The worst pain was coming. Just three more seconds. Two more. Pump, 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 pause. Two eight, two nine. Here it was. The hand would squeeze down, and my rib would break. My body would go up in flames. At two ten, two eleven.
The hand didn't return. My rib didn't break. My heart didn't start beating again. 2-12, 2-13. The palm hovered just above my chest, about to push down. A wrinkly set of fingers gripped his wrist. The woman had managed to push into the circle first responders and grabbed the man just as he was about to administer the last life-giving thrust. Nails bit in the flesh. She tore him backwards. He screamed. 218. Somebody else rushed to my side. Another set of hands found my chest, began to push frantically and struggled to find the rhythm. 224. Something inside me slipped further and further away. A gray shade drifted over the world. 225. The woman was still there, trying to get to this new person too, but the others held her back in 226 and the hands pressed against my chest faster and faster and the shouts grew louder at 227 and closer together and somebody else arrived in second 228. A set of the hands joining the first and a rib 229 broke and another and they pumped in 230, screamed in 231, 232, 230. And then I woke. My body twitched on the mattress, convulsing. I was frozen from the vicious cramps tearing their way through me. I tried to scream, but my jaw just inched open for a second, then bit down with all my might as the next cramp hit me. My tongue got caught between my teeth, taste of blood spread, my stomach cramped, and something was pushed up my throat. With a desperate motion, I threw myself to the side. Somehow I'd gathered enough force to flick myself off the side of my bed. My forehead slammed against the edge of the night table. My vision blurred. I crashed to the ground, unable to dampen the fall in any way. At least I wouldn't suffocate my own vomit in this new position. I lay there for minutes until the worst pain slowly receded. This was the last time I slept. Fear of what had happened kept me away through the next night. Pack of caffeine pill got me through another one. Now I'm reaching my limit. I feel myself slipping. I feel myself drifting off. I won't be able to stay conscious for much longer. Dark spidery dots crawl in the corner of my vision. My head feels like it is filled with cotton. My eyelids flutter close. And it gets harder and harder to open them back up. Soon, I will sleep. Soon, I will dream. Soon, I will die again. For two minutes and eleven seconds. Or maybe forever.